I'm talking today of uh, uh, the UDD, um, a presumably Chinese scripture, as I, I wrote uh, back in the title here. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to talk more about what happens in Japan with this scripture. So the UDD is often listed as one of the most important scriptures of Tantric Buddhism in East Asia, probably because it's one of the basic uh, uh, five texts of the major schools of Japanese studies and Tantric tradition, both in the Ten Daiji and uh, uh, version. Yet, its contribution to the esoteric tradition um, seemed to have been very little understood. The role that it played in Chinese Buddhism remains unclear, and its structural and true relevance in the early Japanese esoteric Buddhism seems negligible. In medieval Japan, on the other hand, the, scriptures appear, the scripture appears to have been rediscovered and enjoyed great fortune. Several commentaries of varied size and format were produced by scholar monks of the major esoteric lineages, and secret transmission documents circulated across lineages. At the same time, a new type of initiatory abhisheka, the Yumi uh, Abhisheka Yumi Kanjo in Japanese, uh, informed by the sutra, emerged. And uh, this is an important uh, um, type of abhisheka which will take eventually a central place in the later program of the Tainitsu lineage. So my question here are, what spurred such a sudden interest in the origin in medieval Japan? Were there particular features in the scripture that engendered the interest of Japanese scholars? What did Japanese exegetes read into the scripture? How did they translate it into performative terms? To what extent were such practices novel and thus reveal distinct shifts in the medieval understanding of Tantric Buddhism? Or should we consider the links and connection of the Indian spiritual practices entertained with continental Buddhism beyond Chinese Buddhism in order to grasp the extent of the medieval innovations? Now, let's look at what the Indian is. Um, the scripture was probably compiled in China in the second half of the 8th century, sometime after the death of Amogavatra and before Kukai's arrival in China in 804. Its translation, inverted commas, was traditional attribution to Vajrabodhi. Although questions concerning the translator uh, seem to have been raised in Japan since the medieval period, for Japanese medieval commentaries uh, remark on two possible translators. Curiously, the origin does not appear in contemporary official Chinese catalogues and is not among the manuscripts in Wuhan as far as I know. However, it must have existed in China and widely circulated in esoteric circles because inventories of scriptures acquired in China by many of the Japanese monks who went uh, in the early uh, Heian period um, enlisted the scripture, both in its form, uh, such as the Kukai and uh, Erwin's catalogues, or as one chapter that seemed to have been transmitted independently, um, and that we find in the catalogue of Emin, Nengyo, and Shua. It's also said that Kukai um, borrowed from the, the full title of Yuikyo um, the, the name of the temple complex that he established in Kues on the Kongo Buji, uh, the Adamantan uh, Peak Temple. Um, but uh, it seems also that uh, um, the impact on the doctrinal ritual exegesis uh, cannot be discerned in Kukai's writings. The Eugene is a complex scripture, constituted of 12 chapters, which may be considered independent from each other or loosely connected, suggesting that the scripture might have been a collection of, collection of passages from different Indian works that were translated into Chinese and brought together in the text that we now have. The scripture is not centered on a single deity. It is, in fact, the textual source for the iconography of ritual practice of a number of deities that will become significant in Japanese Buddhism as object of individual worship. <coughs> Recent attention has been given to Aizen, uh, of whom two chapters of the scriptures are dedicated. And in fact, my own work in the scripture started from Aizen. This sutra, however, uh, provides information on the ritual identity of, um, of a deity called the Daisho Kungo in Japanese, of Butsugen, Buddha no China, very important deities of all the Kineoki traditions, to whom chapter 9 is dedicated, and also to the five great Kokuzo, Akashagantas. So we have a, a range 
of, um, of deities that uh, um, refer back to the scripture. Further, chapter 11, um, entitled uh, The Awakened Mind of Vajrasattva and the Attainment of the Consecration of Inner Actions, describes a new visualization practice centered on a curious set of 15 deities and that I will come back to. Um, modern Japanese scholarship has used the Ryujidin as an example of tantric text that combines the two uh, mandalic realities embodied by the womb world, Taizo Kai, and the Adamanta world, the Kongo Kai. Probably drawn, uh, drawing on the fact that uh, at various points, uh, the scripture uses mudras and mantras associated with both uh, the two mandalas. Um, following the hint of uh, Omura Segai at the beginning of the 20th century, scholars have suggested that such combination, of which today is regarded as the fundamental pattern of tantric Buddhism in Japan, had already occurred in China from the mid to the end of the time period. Um, it's, it's a very complicated uh, matter whether, in fact, uh, we can uh, draw, we can refer back to uh, Tang China, uh, such a combination. Uh, in fact, uh, even early Japanese monks, Ku Kai, for instance, never took the Yujin as a scripture that combined the, the teachings of the two worlds. A first uh, change in the interpretation of the Yujin was perhaps triggered by Annen, the Tendai monk uh, whom we know as the great systematizer of Japanese esoteric uh, Buddhism. Um, Annen's uh, Jesus is, uh, I think, uh, repositioning uh, uh, the UGG in both doctrinally and ritually. First of all, Annen elaborated a complex theory whereby the UGG became a crucial term in the threefold system of Buddhism that characterized the Tainan's lineages. Um, basically, Annen posited as an accomplishment uh, class, the Soshitsuji in Japanese. Uh, with the function of unifying the two other categories. Uh, and then they took the Yujijina to be the accomplishment method according to the Adamantina reality. Uh, further, he identified the text as the essence of the two mandalic realities, Ryogu uh, Daiho no Kanji, as we read in uh, not only the commentary of the uh, text, of this text, but also in some of the major works, such as the Kyoji Li. Um, interestingly, uh, and then also uh, looked at his text in ritual terms. He focused on a crucial set of uh, uh, mantras in eight syllables called um, the mudra, known as the mudra mantra of the Achara of the Ujijin, or um, as the eight syllable mantra of the sudden enlightenment and the great compassion of the Umriya. Um, that is made up of uh, five syllables, Aviram uh, Kam, that are uh, the, the sixth syllable of the five elements, in fact. Um, the visualization of which is a fundamental practice according to the Dari Jin, you know, the, the basis for the uh, Vum Mandela. Uh, the remaining three syllables embody three of the five Buddhas of the Adamantai Mandala. Thus, by uttering this mantra and uh, uh, making the corresponding mudra, uh, the practitioner is said to physically realize the unification of the two mandalas. Interestingly, and then also speaks of these eight syllables being distributed on eight parts of the body as it is in, the, in the same kind of uh, uh, manner as it is explained uh, in the Dali Jin for the five uh, uh, syllables. Um, in this way, it seems that uh, uh, and then can be seen to uh, lay the foundation of initiatory practices informed by the UGD. Let me now turn to medieval commentaries, and I've made a list of the major ones, uh, roughly uh, arranged in chronological order, and I won't uh, go through them because of uh, the time. Uh, but uh, you can see that there are uh, several uh, written between the 12th and 16th century. Um, as it is evident from their title, titles, medieval commentaries took the form of hidden show, secret transmission, cookets, oral decisions, couldn't show, oral transmissions, betraying their connection with, and perhaps origin within, an initiatory context, and a style more fragmentary than discursive, as one can expect uh, from ritual instruction manuals. However, many of these works are in fact long writings that resemble the traditional format of the Sutra commentary, providing an analysis of the title of the scripture and a chapter-by-chapter -chapter elucidation of the content, albeit uh, in, uh, sometimes in a selected and perhaps incomplete form. 
Um, this preliminary inventory that I uh, made, and you see here that I brought together both the um, commentaries in the uh, Shingo tradition and commentaries in the um, Tendai tradition, and these are mostly, except for the ones by Mokan, are mostly published rituals in the collections uh, of writings of the Tendai school and the Shingo school, so this is not, nothing new, uh, but uh, uh, nobody has really looked at this, uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, works. Um, what the preliminary victory uh, tells us is that uh, uh, ritual knowledge on the UGG was widespread and uh, the rituals informed by the scriptures were used in different tantric lineages. Individual interpretations seem to have circulated across the sectarian borders uh, for uh, we not only find passages of one or the other commentary in the writing of, com of competing lineages, but major commentaries seem to have uh, being copied by scholars of competing lineages. Uh, for instance, I've done um, some field work in the archives of the Tendai school, Aizan uh, Bunko, and there are several uh, uh, copies <coughs> of a uh, well known work by Gohan, the Yubikyo Kuketsu, so exist in the hands of Tendai monks. Let me uh, say a few words about the characteristics of these commentaries. Um, I think when we look at them all together, despite uh, the differences in, script, in the structures and the details of the interpretation, uh, we can uh, um, identify two characteristics. Uh, one, in terms of subject matter, the commentaries encompass performative issues, intersecting more doctrinal points with specific cultural matters. This may be due to the nature itself of the scripture, which after all we call the sutra, but is a temper, and therefore is, uh, includes a wealth of ritual elements. Um, but also, it tells us that the commentaries are a form of ritual exegesis, and therefore, I would argue, need to be read together with ritual documents concerning initiatory practices, such as ritual protocols, certificates of transmission, and maps of ritual space. Secondly, medieval commentators all read in the UGG elaborating the expressions of duality and of its overcoming and in so doing, unequivocally transformed the scripture into a combinatory scripture. The best example of this um, that I can find is uh, the uh, exegesis of the title of the UGG. You will all know that the um, attention to the meaning of the title of the scripture uh, is an established Sino-Japanese exegetical tradition that saw in the title of the scripture its essence. Mm -hmm. And we all know the uh, many works, for instance, of the Lotus Sutra in the Kantai tradition, and even in the uh, Shingo, uh, Japanese Shingo tradition. The interpretation of the title of the Eugene plays on the conventional dualistic motif, motifs of the two mundanic realities, but also introduces new elements. And to understand it, we need to look at the entire title of the, uh, of the sutra, of the full title of that, as given by these characters, Jinga uh, Fen. Um, uh, I'll, I'll read it in Japanese because that is where uh, you see the, the, the equivalence more easily. Um, so it's Kongogu, Rokaku, Isai, Yuga, Ibukyo. And you will see the equivalences with the Kongo and the Taizokai in um, picking up some elements of the architecture, you could say, um, uh, references to the title. Uh, but what I'd like to, you to draw attention, and this is just one of the examples, so there are many others in the, in the long paper, there were others, um, is the last four characters. They are uh, interpreted in uh, identifying a male and female uh, element, in this case, uh, male voice and female voice. Um, in other words, not only the, 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 the Japanese commentators are subsumed in the title, the combination of the two worlds, they also posited that a male-female opposition by imaginatively reading in the compound Yuga Yugi in gendered terms. According to medieval exegetes, uh, the term Yuga and Yugi, which in Sanskrit identify a practice, yoga, and its practitioner, yogin, the yogin, would both mean yoga, and uh, with yuga being a masculine term and yogi a feminine term. And this is a fanciful uh, etymology for yogi is not a feminine noun in Sanskrit. Um, such reading of the title appears to have been the standard the mainstream interpretation shared across lineages. It recurs uh, not only in the commentaries but also in the initiatory documents. And my favorite example of this is uh, this engine. Uh, 
to a certificate um, from the 14th century, uh, with, which had this uh, fascinating title of uh, um, the, the inner and fathomable meaning of one's body attaining Buddhahood. You see the, the two characters, uh, the Siddha, uh, uh, indicating Yugi here, and uh, this is the title Jishin Jubitz of Fukata Kuhi, and this is the title of the uh, Sutra. And here I have a slightly larger um, example. This is actually a, an engine that I published for more than, uh, more than 10 years ago uh, when I was not really aware of uh, the textual context mm -hmm. uh, from which uh, it was generated. Um, the, the way in which this, uh, uh, the title is here um, glossed, I'd say, um, and is lost in a kind of color-coded way, um, says, uh, Kongogu uh, equal white fluid uh, wisdom, Rokaku equal uh, red fluid principle, uh, Isayuga Yukyo, with this very interesting um, crisscrossing because between Yu Yu and Gagi, is the union of the two waters, uh, the seat of consciousness so that is entrusted inside. And uh, the Rosa continues saying that this is the meaning of the human body, is the Buddha body. This is the non-duality of principle and wisdom. And I think it's very interesting the, the, the graphic way in which uh, the commentator uh, links the characters in pairs of two. You see here the uh, little uh, red lines. Um, I'll leave it to this. Uh, uh, but there are several other examples of Eugene that use the same, um, the same explanation and also the same image. That is a, a vam that is made by the Venn practitioner of Yuki-kyo, which is not just a, a kind of heretical interpretation, but is drawn from the very early section of the, of the scripture, which discusses the meaning of the syllable vam. I want to go now uh, to the uh, um, I have a bit more time to the ritual, the, this ritual called uh, the um, the uh, uh, Yogi Nabishen. Both medieval commentaries and ritual documents uh, highlight this new type of consecration, which appears to have been created by Japanese ritualists in the medieval period and enjoyed immediate and enduring success, judging, judging from the wealth of material concerning the ritual, including uh, ritual procedures. Um, uh, personal instructions, the plans of the ritual space, which have been preserved in temple archives of different lineages. The Yugin concentration entails a set of visualization practiced, and I go back to this one, and recreating in the body of the practitioner the body of Mahavarochana. It is based on chapter 11 of Yugin, the one I mentioned earlier on. Um, and in this chapter, the practitioner is instructed, I'm quoting, to visualize his body in the shape of the Buddha. And uh, uh, a list of uh, uh, curious set of 15 deities is given um, that uh, these deities have to be located on a specific part of the practitioner's body. Um, the uh, Japanese uh, medieval commentaries um, illustrated the installation of the 15 venerables, so drawing, uh, with drawings that translate the sutric instruction graphically. Mm -hmm. I have two examples here for, for you. This is from the Yuki Oiketsu attributed to Jijun, and perhaps one of the early dated commentaries. And this one, which I'm uh, with, it comes from a Congo in Hiketsu, um, a newly uh, unveiled set of uh, Injin that have been actually fundamental for understanding uh, the, 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 the um, position of this uh, engine within uh, a ritual uh, commentary tradition. And I take this image to explain about the deities because it's, um, uh, well, it's more colored, slightly, uh, graphically more appealing. Um, the, 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 the text says, the text of the sutra says, uh, and I'm quoting here, the original Vajrasattva occupies the space holding the interest wheel. Tara becomes the two eyes. Uh, Kuti is the ears, Chijo is the tongue, uh, the tongue. Uh, Rati becomes the tip of the nose, Vajrakarma and Avalokitesvara, uh, meditation and wisdom, become the arms, uh, Trilokya and Achala become the knees and legs, 
The venerable shrine who shines everywhere, the display of China, becomes the heart. Buddha of China becomes the navel, Akasamala is the crown, uh, Vajra Tejas uh, becomes the primary and secondary marks of a Buddha. Now, what can we see, in, and, and I will try to show you also some other images that are more complicated, uh, allocation of these deities in which each of the deities actually corresponds to a section of the two mandalas, so that this uh, sort of basic sutric instruction is translated into terms that are more familiar to the Japanese uh, uh, context. Um, so, what can we uh, get out of the, um, this uh, the material? Um, first of all, the practice of installing deities on a practitioner's body is not unique to the Yugi Amishek, as a long history in type of context, uh, even beyond uh, Buddhism. The first feature that emerges in the Yugi uh, uh, material concerns the part of the body on which the 15 deities are installed. So these are, in my opinion, ways of marking the body. And now we can see. Um, sorry, I go back. The deities are allocated to sensorial organs, uh, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and the limbs, arms and legs. Um, in other words, the emphasis is on sense faculties, uh, sight, smell, hearing, taste, uh, touch. That is, those faculties that allow the body to perceive uh, the world around it. We can also note that uh, uh, the, the, the diagrams highlight a vertical sequence of crucial points of the body. The heart is marked at the center, uh, marked are also the head, the tongue, and the navel. Taken together, the deities installed uh, seem to mark four chakras that are central in the conception of the subtle body, the invisible body made of vital points and channels through which energy flows. Now, channels are not indicated in the Japanese diagrams, but the understanding of an inner body that comes to the fore in these transmissions seems to be very close to that of a subtle body. Um, the material uh, on uh, the Savishaka, in fact, makes explicit that the concern of Japanese ritualists is with the inner mandala, as opposite to the painted mandalas uh, used in rituals, which takes the practitioner's own body as the proper site of liberation. The terminology related to this consecration stresses the interior of the body and its inner action. It's in the title itself of the, both of the sutra of chapter and of the, uh, uh, in the description of the consecration. Um, commentaries, and, and, um, commentaries and transmission documents also reiterate that for this consecration, it is not necessary to construct a ritual platform for the place of performance is a himitsudan a secret altar in the mind of the practitioner, where the practitioner's mandalic body is visualized. A second aspect of this, uh, uh, of this uh, consecration, has to do with the, the uh, internalization of ritual consecration as well. The documents uh, uh, make clear that the object of the ritual is not an external deity with whom to attain union, but the original body, Honno Shin in Japanese, of the practitioner himself. It is this body that is worshipped. In the sequence called the offering to oneself or venerating oneself, Jiguyo, uh, the disciple is instructed to make offerings to himself according to procedure. The offerings include the incense, flowers, food, land, clothes, sacred water, in other words, the usual offerings made to a deity during a ritual. The practitioners visualize each of these objects in a specific order and mentally present them to himself. It is only at the end of this oblation that the practitioners proclaim the new Buddha. The act of self-veneration thus reflects the attainment of a state of status and reinforces the privileges of, of such a status uh, for, uh, as in all tantric system, only a god can worship a god. Um, a final aspect of, uh, um, of these uh, documents has to do with the creation of a new body. The commentary is uh, uh, articulated the role of the body, both in theoretical terms and in performative terms, reiterating the knowledge of the constitution of the human body is crucial and that in order to become a Buddha, one needs to understand the generative practices that make a human being. Commentary and initiatory sources 
characterize the inner body as original, as I've mentioned earlier. While the practitioner's body is embedded in time as a body that is born and dies, the projection of our text is that the very body goes beyond time, recovering a no beginning, no end, to say to the classic Buddhist expression for eternity, condition of pre-differentiated origin. It is in this context uh, that uh, the ritualization of the process of gestation of the sentient being um, appears uh, in, uh, um, in relation to the unique angel. Um, the material that I've analyzed uh, includes a visual and performative interpretation of the growth of an embryo, charting a five-stage process through which a new body is produced. So this is what is known in Japanese as the timeline goi. These embryological charts illustrate the condition in which birth takes place, with the semen and menstrual blood that mix in the mother's womb and the implanting of consciousness in the womb. The gradual formation of a physical body culminates in the image of five elements stupa, the Gorin Tod, if you see there on the fourth stage. Um, and the five elements are the five material constituent of reality and a correlative term of the five viscera, as we will hear uh, later on in this conference. Um, the, la the last stage conveys the transformation of such body in that of the Tathagata. Um, I've written a lot about this uh, uh, diagram, so I'm not uh, uh, going to uh, dwell on it, but it's very interesting that, for instance, this uh, specific example comes from a uh, lineage, a tiny little lineage that is uh, uh, called the Tofukuji lineage, uh, and today Tofukuji is uh, always considered to be a Zen temple, so that uh, gives us an idea uh, of the spread of uh, this idea, of these uh, notions. Right, I have to conclude uh, very briefly. Um, yeah. The historical reasons why medieval Japan and the Eugene surged to popularity remain to be clarified. However, the commentarial and ritual tradition developed thereby opens the way for new consideration on the nature of the sutra and its connections to continental yogic literature. The ritual practices of the Japanese exegetes developed from the Eugene flesh out the connections the description pertains with yoga tantras in a more conspicuous manner. It is, in fact, in uh, Yoga Tantras uh, that uh, a distinct discourse on the body uh, had been put forward. Uh, in this text, the body of the practitioner provided the devotee, the altar, and the oblation, and the Buddha to be worshipped, as uh, um, other scholars working on the Tibetan tradition have highlighted. The Japanese material of the Yogi consecration demonstrates that Japanese interpreters fully understood the meaning of the Yuji and the practice appointed. Um, and developed it in what we can say orthodox way. And there's a long discussion in the Japanese um, uh, contemporary discourse whether these practices are actually orthodox or not. When we consider the ritual together with the scripture and its exegetical tradition, the material of the Eugene suggests the need to refrain medieval Japanese interpretations, both doctrinally and ritually, in a more transnational trans context. It also provides evidence to revisit the received narrative of the development of tantric Buddhism in Japan, displacing the image of a more intellectualistic tradition, distant and distinct from its Indo-Tibetan kin. Thank you.